Welcome to worship today. Special welcome to guests we have with us today. We're happy we can worship God together. And we also want to say a very special welcome to the baptismal family here today for Quinlan Julianne's baptism. We welcome all of you from the family and loved ones who are with us today. Um, we noted the birthday this morning of Phyllis Toffiner. She is 90 years old today, and she said we could say that, too. So <laughs> if you see Phyllis, please uh, extend a happy birthday greeting to her. Today is her birthday, 90 years old, a milestone birthday for her. Please note also in the Fellowship Hall, Narthex area, uh, the Jamaica mission, tree, mission trip people are out today. Um, we have a few of them in the pews, too. You'll see their T-shirts. Um, Jeannie, if you want to stand up so people can see you. And they will be here next Sunday as well. Are you going to be after this service, too, uh, making that available to people? So if you can give prayer support or financial support to the mission trip folks who are going to Jamaica this summer in June... Uh, they look forward to that there are, uh, this Sunday, next Sunday, and then the final two Sundays in May, they'll be doing something a little different, too, uh, that you'll be able to support them in. And we thank you for all of your help. Please note, we remember in prayer today those listed in your bulletin, and we also remember the family and loved ones of Annabelle Evenson. Annabelle died on Friday at Kinnick Care Center. The funeral for Annabelle will be Wednesday here at Ezekiel at 11 a.m. Visitation Tuesday 4 to 7 at Cashman Hill Funeral Home. The other announcements are all printed there in your bulletin. I invite you to read them and respond as God calls and leads you. As we enter into worship now and as the light in the cross enter the sanctuary, I invite you to stand and center your hearts in God. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We confess our sin and hear the promise of God's forgiveness. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection, yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We welcome to the sacrament of holy baptism today Quinlan Julianne, and she is being held by her father Jason, mother Nicole, and Sponsors, baptismal sponsors today, we welcome Mallory, Jamie, Logan, Tiffany, and Aaron. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. As we live in communion with Christ's church, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. We baptize in response to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Whom do you present for the sacrament of holy baptism? In Christian love, you have presented Quinlan Julianne for holy baptism. Will you help her grow in Christian faith and life? We will, with God's help. 
Will you live with her among God's faithful people? Bring her to worship the Word of God and the Holy Communion. Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, and place in her hands the Holy Scriptures. Will you nurture her in faith and prayer so she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, work for justice and peace? We will, with God's help. And now, people of God here in the Ezekiel congregation, will you support Quinlan Julianne, pass on faith to her, and pray for her and her new life in Christ? If so, say, we will, with God's help. We will, with God's help. I ask you now, parents, sponsors, and congregation to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. And now we profess our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in God, in God the, the Father, Father Almighty, 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 creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life of Amen. St. Paul writes, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit he poured on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus, death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that Julie, Quinlan Julianne, who is washed in the waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Quinlan, Julianne, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The congregation say amen. amen. The congregation may be seated. Okay. We give you thanks, O God. Through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them up to eternal life. Sustain Quinlan Julianne with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Quinlan Julianne, you are a child of God. We mark you with the sign of the cross and seal you with the Holy Spirit forever. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks for the gift of Quinlan Julianne, and now for the gift of new life, as she is joined to Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection and everlasting love. We thank you for this gift and for the eternal life that she is now baptized into in Jesus' name. Grant her parents and sponsors the encouragement of your Holy Spirit as they raise her in the faith and pass on faith to her. 
In Jesus' name, amen. As a congregation, we rejoice today in the baptism of Quinlan and Julianne, and we are happy to present her with a faith chest that's been built by the members of Ezekiel. And the faith chest represents a way to remember the baptismal faith journey that continues throughout life, and it's a place to keep cherished items from Quinlan's baptism day, as well as other faith resources like a Bible for nurturing faith along the way every day. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The Ezekiel congregation would like to present Quinlan Julian with this very special faith chest. As children of God ourselves, we realize how important this baptism day is and wanted to provide Quinlan Julian with a way to look back on it as they grow in God's word. We welcome you to our church family. We light this candle from the Paschal candle, the light of Christ, the light no darkness can overcome. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Through baptism, God has made this child, Quinlan Julianne, a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus. Please join me in welcoming Quinlan Julianne with the words on the screen. We welcome you into the body of First lesson, a reading from the book of Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatria and was a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. She prevailed upon us. Word of the Lord. Second lesson a reading from the book of Revelation. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no lamp, light of lamp, or of sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of the Lord. We invite the children to come forward at this time. It's good to see you this morning. How many of you have neighbors? Does everybody have a neighbor? And do you get along with your neighbors? Do you? Yeah? Do people always get along with their neighbors? No. It doesn't always happen, does it? And uh, how many of you have a brother or sister? Yeah? Do you know that they're your neighbor? Mm hmm. Do you always get along with them? No. And that was true for me, too, when I was growing up. So how many of you have a mom or dad? Did you know that they are your neighbor? Mm -hmm. Do you always get along with them? Mm, not always, right? Yeah. And some of you go to school, right? And do you have classmates at school? Yeah? Do you get along with them all the time? No, not all the time. So, one of the things that um, we need in our relationships is peace, right? That's one of the things we need. And that's one of the things that Jesus gives. And so today, you're going to hear Minister Kim. She's going to read from the gospel and give us a message. And we hear about Jesus' peace that comes to us, and that peace is beyond something that we can do ourselves. It's a peace that Jesus gives us that changes our relationships and makes them good and whole. And sometimes we use the word, we talk about peace, we use the word unity. There's a oneness that comes with the peace of Jesus. And so when we come today to worship God and come into the presence of Jesus, we know that Jesus gives us a gift. And the gift that he gives is the gift of peace. And that's a gift that we're not just keeping to ourselves, but we also share and give to others. And so today, that's what we'd like to do is to share that peace of Jesus with others. And I'm wondering if you can help with that today. Would you be willing to help with that today? And the way we'll do it is, after we're done with the children's message, is we'll ask everybody out there to stand up. And then if you would go to the end of the pew, and you can shake somebody's hand at the end of the pew and say, God's peace be with you. Or you can say, Christ's peace be with you. Can you say that with me? God's peace be with you. Christ's peace be with you. You can use either one. That's fine. Okay? And so that once everybody in the pew, on the outside of the pew, it receives that peace, then they can share it with others in their pew too. Okay? So let's have a prayer, and then we'll go out and share the peace. Shall we? Pray, and the congregation pray with us. Dear Jesus, thank you for your peace. Help us to share it today. 
and every day. Amen. So the congregation, I invite you to stand, and then if you would just go to the end of the pew and say, God's peace be with you, and shake their hand. Okay, all the way down so everybody gets to have that peace. Did you guys get some peace over here? Gospel according to John chapter 14. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine but is from the father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Last weekend, I was on retreat with several women and girls from here, and we had a fabulous time. Our theme was on the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. During one of these sessions, the adults stayed in the retreat center and had their own discussion on the fruits while I took the girls and we went on a fruit of the spirit nature hike. And the girl's job was for each fruit is to find something that represents it out in nature. Now when we came to peace, it was a quick and unanimous decision. Anybody have any ideas what it might have been? The lake. And I have to agree, I totally would have picked the lake too, especially on that day. The sun was out, the weather was beautiful, the lake was calm and very peaceful looking. Now personally, I also have also always been drawn to water when I feel the stress of life taking its toll on me. Many years ago in the spring, when I was a camp director and preparing for the summer to come, I really needed some refreshment and peace before the summer. And so I flew to Florida and stayed in a hotel on the beach all by myself, and it was fabulous. It was renewing, it was refreshing, and it brought me a lot of peace. We often think of peace as the absence of conflict. We pray for peace in our world, especially in places that always seem to be in turmoil. And even though the world, term world peace has almost gotten to be kind of a joke because of the immensity of the problem, and the likeliness of it happening in our lifetime, it's still something to hope for. When we find conflict in our families, workplaces, and communities, we certainly hope and pray for peaceful solutions to cease the conflict that's going on. And this kind of peace is critical to our lives and our world, no matter how far away it may seem. And it's important to hope and pray for such peace regularly. We hear Jesus today say that he gives not as the world gives, and I really thank God for that, because the world gives us a lot to deal with. You might say the good, the bad, and the ugly. The world gives us fear and distress, sickness and disease, expectations that stretch us thin, desires for things we don't need. We enter the rat race, we keep up with the Joneses, 
we are on the superhighways. These are not things that Jesus gives us. But Jesus does give us something. He has left us with something that makes the world more bearable, survivable, even manageable, and that is peace. But it's a peace that's deeper and wider than just the absence of conflict. It penetrates us and lives in our soul. It's a very part of our being. It's a peace that passes all understanding. Now the world thinks it can give us that kind of peace. It tricks us into believing that by doing more and having more and being more connected, that will make us better. And that all that fear and despair and anxiety will be more tolerable. So we buy the latest technological gadget or we jump on the latest social media platform so that way we're more accessible and we can keep closer tabs on those we love. We make sure that we are involved in many things and that our kids are so that they're well-rounded and happy. When somebody in the family is sick, addicted to something, depressed, or going through a hard time, we keep it to ourselves because the world doesn't give us a place to be upfront and open about such things. It doesn't give us the place to admit our defeat and have someone care for and love us despite those things. The world tricks us into keeping it to ourselves, pulling up our bootstraps and working through it. Work harder. Be more diligent. You can do it. You are strong enough. And we're inundated with media that pumps us up to do it on our own. Now, there's a song that came out not that long ago that I actually really like. It's Rachel Platten's fight song. And it is quite inspirational. And I saw a thing on TV with some kids with cancer that used it to help them for their disease, and I was just a bubbling mess watching it. But the lyrics are this. This is my fight song, take back my life song, prove I am all right song, my power's turned on, so right now I'll be strong, I'll play my fight song. I don't care if no one else believes, because I've got a lot of fight left in me. And while I'm still going to continue to enjoy this song, it makes me wonder how many people really know where their power is turned on from. Because the reality is you don't, you don't have it on your own, and you don't have to prove yourself right and strong by yourself. We believe what the world gives us, and sometimes that's a great mistake. But there is something better. It's the peace that Jesus gives unlike nothing else. It's an amazing gift that helps us live into faith rather than in fear, despair, stress, and anxiety. Now, I was reading this week about peace, and I read an, an article that said there's four aspects to peace. And first is the belief in God. So we believe in God. We trust in the promises of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit because God will never fail us. When Jesus says peace he leaves with us, he means it. So trust it. Trust the Holy Spirit to work in your life and to provide that peace. The second is to live into the moment. Accept the pleasure of the moment without thinking about the past or looking ahead to the future. A few weeks ago, we took the kids to Confirmation Kids to see the movie Miracles from Heaven. And it's a movie based on a true story about a very sick little girl who had an encounter with God during a tragedy and was miraculously healed of her illness. And at the end of the movie, the mom is reflecting on all that had happened during her daughter's time of illness. And she said, looking back, she wished she had noticed all the time when all the little miracles had happened. Every day. And every day we too are trudging through difficult times in life. And when we're in the deep of it, or maybe it's even not that deep, we miss recognizing those places of pleasantness and miracle moments that bring us peace. And third is the absence of strife in relationships. We can't always alleviate the conflict and tension between people, but when we work to show love, kindness, acceptance, and tolerance to others, it certainly doesn't hurt. Obviously, the absence of conflict, while well, not the only aspect of peace, is a big part of it. Patience with one another goes a lot further than impatience. Now, I found a principle that I heard about many years ago that's been especially helpful for me in dealing with difficult personalities and conflict. Seek first to understand, then be understood. Because often when I seek first to understand, I realize 
that I maybe don't even need to be understood, that it doesn't matter or it might not be important anymore. Or if it is still important, then I've already made that first step in that relationship. And the fourth aspect of peace is the knowledge that even though we don't do everything right, and sometimes we don't do anything right, we are always forgiven. There's nothing we can do or not do that Jesus will not forgive us for. We're often harder on ourselves than Christ is on us. He loves us and forgives us, and that should bring us an incredible sense of peace. Now, I think there's a reason why I'm drawn to water so much when I'm feeling in need of peace of Christ in my life. And I think it comes back to the waters of baptism. Obviously, we just had a baptism to remind us of the promises that are made there. And there's a peace that comes with those promises and that are affirmed years later. And there's a peace that comes from being among God's faithful people, worshiping, communing, praying, knowing the Lord's Prayer and the Creed and the Ten Commandments and reading the Word of God, nurturing our faith, trusting in God and caring for the world and others, and recognizing our call to work for justice and peace. And while some of these promises we make work fine independently and in solitude alone, and in some cases we do need time for that, but for the most part these promises work best in community. And there's a reason that they're made in this body of Christ and that we all promise to support one another in these. In order to really have the peace of Christ, the peace that Jesus has left for us, we have to have each other. We're united in these waters, in these waters that bring us peace. Now I want you to use your imaginations for a minute. We just saw the, the water being poured into the baptism font from the pitcher. But I've always thought it would be super cool if we had this giant hose that descended from the ceiling and it filled that font, and then it overflowed. And somehow it filled the sanctuary, and we're all floating in the baptismal water together. Because when you're in water together, you're literally connected by the water. You're sitting in the same body of water with another person. You, you can't be, you know, you have to be united to each other. You don't say, this is my water space, and that is your water space. It doesn't work that way. Now let's say there's some waves over in that corner, some turbulence, and the people over there are really feeling it. Well, we all feel it together, and we support them, and we support one another, because we are in this together, and we need each other to be reminded of the peace that Christ has for us. It really is hard to experience on your own. And the other sacrament, our communion. We also, we always share the peace with each other like we did um, during the children's message. And this is not just another greeting that we do to welcome our neighbor and say good morning. It's deeper than that. It's a reminder, a blessing that the peace of Christ is with you and that I am here with you in that. And then we respond to each other and we say, and also with you. And as you say it, I hope that you think of it as more than just a greeting, but kind of an honor to be a part of this blessing of that peace and a privilege to remind someone about Christ's peace for them and hope for yourself that you are a recipient of such peace. Jesus never leaves us hanging out there with what the world has to give. He gives us so much more. It's so much more valuable and life-giving. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Thank Present with us in all things, grant us your Holy Spirit that we might recognize your presence as you come among us. For Jesus is alive, and has given us the promise of life with him always. Grant us vision to see. Hear us, Lord. 
Here I cry, Lord, let them rise. In the midst of all that troubles us, in the midst of our conflicts, in the midst of our darkness and doubt, come among us that we might know your presence, the peace that you give, the hope that you bring, the love that is ours. Hear us, O Lord. And hear our cries, Lord. Let them rise. For all the nations, all the leaders, for all who serve our country, we pray for Tyler, Colton, Mitchell, Jack, David, Crystal, Stephanie, Brent, Nick, Stacy, Jake, Mike, Joe, and Travis. Protect them and grant them peace. Hear us, Lord. Hear our cries, Lord. Let them rise. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray your presence and your healing grace for Bob, Dwayne, David, Lou, Morgan, Connie, Annabelle, Jack, Elmer, Marjorie, Cindy, Nicholas, Evan, Philip, Wendy, Rita, Gary, Brody, David, Don, and others we name before you. Hear us, Lord. And hear our cries, Lord. Let them rise. And for all who grieve today the loss of loved ones, we especially pray for the family and loved ones of Annabelle Evenson, and for all who grieve today, grant them hope in the risen Lord Jesus. Hear us, Lord. And hear our cries, Lord. Let them rise. You teach us to pray. And so we pray for your Holy Spirit to breathe in us that we might bring to you all the cares and needs and joys of our lives. Hear us, Lord. Hear our cries, Lord. Let them rise. And you have taught us to pray, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We worship God now with our offering. You may be seated. In all of our brokenness, and you forgive us in Jesus and make us whole, and you send us out with your peace, grant us your Holy Spirit that we might be bearers of your peace as we go today. In Jesus' name, amen. 